Greetings, this is Jet Schlackman, and for this video I'll be speaking about the topic of consciousness, energy, and mental health. The point I want to make in this particular presentation is that consciousness and energy are inseparable from one another. <clears throat> so basically what happens is when there's a shift in one, there's unavoidably a shift in the other. So let's say you shift your thinking pattern or you change your emotional state, then your energy field will shift. The frequency or vibration that is active within your being will be transformed. In our human form, that means that also things will shift or change on a physiological and chemical level, since that level is governed by energy. So if we think about a particular emotional state that we might experience, for example, anxiety, well, that anxiety can be perceived or observed as a particular pattern in a person's energy a pattern of tension or constriction in their energy. So rather than having a smooth, harmonious waveform, the energy starts to become kind of chaotic or discordant. If we can provide some type of stimulus or input into that energy system that can provide a resonance or something to entrain the energy to shift into a more harmonious state, that person will start to actually feel different and think differently. So if you can, for example, play some soothing, calming music for that person, they start to entrain with or go into resonance with that music, and suddenly you see that their psychological state has changed they're no longer feeling the level of anxiety that they were previously. We can use a variety of forms of energetic stimuli to trigger those types of shifts. Sound or music would be one form of stimulus. Breathing is another modality in a sense that helps shift your energetic state. Physical exercises, things like yoga or tai chi, meditation, also doing different forms of hands-on energy healing, working with things like Reiki or acupuncture, working with color, with crystals, with aromas from essential oils, flower essences, homeopathic remedies. These are all forms of energetic inputs that provide a stimulus that can help the energy field or system shift into a more desirable state. So energy medicine and energy healing can include all those different various forms of energetic input. Of course, there's the psychological level of our being where we have our emotions and memories, our thoughts and beliefs. So when we shift what we carry within our consciousness, that can often create an even more lasting shift in our energetic pattern or state. So if you have a core belief that you're not good enough, that you're not competent, that you're not worthy, that you can't accomplish things, then your energy will reflect that belief and you'll be restricted in the way that you interact with the world. Whereas if you have a very strong sense of self-confidence, of self-worth, a sense that you are connected to a source of spiritual light or spiritual potential that will always support you, then you reflect that in the energy that you're vibrating or expressing. 
So we can make the shifts <clears throat> on either level, on an energetic level or on a psychological or consciousness level. It's also worth considering that the physical body, the chemical level, is also at least temporarily part of this energy system. And so when we're having our experience as a physical being, as a human here, things that happen to the physical body can shift our energy and also affect our emotional and mental state. So of course our diet and nutrition are one physical stimulus that can have a significant impact. Also different drugs or medicines or herbs that someone consumes. On the physical level, we might also have some type of physical injury that could affect the flow of energy in our being. So these are all things to consider when we look at our mental health, how we're thinking, how we're feeling, how we're behaving or acting, how we respond to our life experiences, how we function in relationships with other people. As a psychotherapist, as a counselor and energy healer, I find that in many cases, one of the quickest and most effective ways to help foster change or transformation is to work directly on an energetic level. So to provide some type of energetic stimulus to shift a person's energy into a more calm or harmonious state when we work on that level, we can in a way bypass conscious resistance. Sometimes just trying to talk to a person to somehow try to convince them to think differently or look at things in another way doesn't succeed or doesn't have a help or benefit for that person because their conscious mind is too attached to their old way of thinking or their current identity or state of consciousness. But if we can work on a subconscious level or an energetic level and help foster just a shift in how that person's energy is flowing and how they're feeling, then that could help open them up to start to think or look at things in a different way. So energy healing methods are a very valuable resource for mental health. In my view, they're kind of, uh, what's the word I would think of for this? They're a resource that is overlooked a lot, let's put it that way. Something that could provide great help but which tends to be neglected in the mental health field. In the healthcare system, there tends to be a lot of fragmentation, a lot of over-specialization. So there are doctors who focus just on the physical body. There are therapists who focus just on the mind and behavior. There are people who are working only on a spiritual level, clergy and people of that type of professional credential. So they're each dealing with a different aspect of a human being. But as human beings, we actually embody all those aspects, the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, and they all interrelate to one another. So we want to be able to provide more of an interdisciplinary or holistic approach to help people address the challenges or concerns in their life. So not to overlook any of those levels, to realize that they are all significant, they can all impact one another. I hope that this brief talk has given each of you some insight into a holistic approach to mental health into understanding how energy and consciousness interrelate to one another 
how one reflects the other and one influences the other. For those that are interested in these subjects, I invite you to visit my website, phinsights.com. That's P-H-I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S dot C-O-M. For now, I want to wish each of you a wonderful day. Namaste.